Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be talking all about position sticky in CSS. We're going to see where it can be used, what it does, why it's useful. Now if you're interested in position static, fixed, relative, and absolute, I also have a video here on my channel which will tell you all about those. But if it's position sticky that you're after, let's get into it. Let's take a look at an example here. I'm on KnittingFactory.com. Knitting Factory is a cool club in New York. And what I want to show you is the behavior of this nav bar here. So notice at the top of the page we have the Knitting Factory logo here with their name. And then underneath it we have a nav bar. In this case the nav bar is actually down about 70 pixels or so from the top of the viewport. So let's check out the behavior of this nav bar as we scroll down the page. So notice as we start scrolling it moves moving up, up, until finally it hits the top of the viewport and essentially becomes fixed. So it hits the top of the viewport and remains fixed to the top of the viewport as the rest of the page scrolls. And then if we go back up, you can see once again it moves down about that 70 pixels or so. So I don't think on this site that they're actually using Position Sticky to do this. They're creating this in a different way, but with Position Sticky we can achieve this exact result here, but in a much simpler and straightforward way. So I wanted to show you that example of that nav bar because that's one of the typical uses of Position Sticky. And like I said, we are going to dive into the details of Position Sticky, but I just want to get you started with this example to show you how easy it is to create something like what we just saw. Sticky. So I'm here in VS Code, and I have some boilerplate HTML here. And you can see here on line 6 that I'm linking to my styles.css file, which I have here on the right side of the screen. So to kind of mimic what we just saw, Let's first set up an H1, and we'll say the code creative for our text content. And then let's make a nav element, which is going to be our nav bar. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a P tag, and I'm going to give it a whole bunch of lorem ipsum. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I want the page to now scroll. So I had to give it a lot of content. So if we switch to the browser now, you can see that because I have so much lorem ipsum here, I get a scroll bar. And we're going to need that to see the way that position sticky works. So you can see our h1 here, and of course right now you can't see anything for the nav bar because it's essentially just a div and we need to give it some styling. So let's come in here into our styles.css file. And actually before we do anything, let's just set the margins on our body element to be zero just so we can get rid of any default margin stylings. Now let's create a rule for our nav bar. We'll give it some height. We'll give it a height of 70 pixels. And let's give it some background color. We'll give it a dark gray kind of color. And now let's check out the browser. And here you can see now we have that nav bar here. So if I was to scroll now, check out the nav bar. You see it just disappears from the screen, and that's normal behavior. You see, by default, all elements will get position static. And position static elements remain in the document flow. They don't get fixed to the viewport. So let's come back to VS Code and see how we can make this position sticky. So our nav bar is the one that we want to stick or remain fixed to the top of the viewport. So we're going to give it a position sticky. Now let's go back to the browser and see what kind of behavior we get. So let's scroll again. And as you can see, that nav bar behaves in exactly the same way. You see, because with position sticky, we need to provide it with a top property. Oh, snap! That top property is going to represent the threshold, at which point we want that element to become fixed. So we said that we want it to become fixed at the top of the viewport. So that means we're going to give it zero pixels for the top. So now let's switch back to the browser. And we'll scroll once again, check out the nav bar. And you see, as it hits the top of the viewport, which is zero pixels, at that point it becomes fixed. It no longer moves, stays fixed at the top of the viewport, and the remainder of the page can scroll. So you can see just how easy it is to create this effect. But let's dig a little deeper. So let's look a little bit further at this top property here. So what we had done was we set the top property to be zero pixels. So that means that there is a zero pixel offset from the top of the viewport, which means that once the nav element hits the top of the viewport, it's essentially going to become fixed. But let's try some other values. Let's try 30 pixels. And let's flip back to the browser. And now what should happen is when we scroll, 
Once this navbar hits around here, or 30 pixels from the top of the viewport, that's a point at which it should become fixed to the viewport. So let's scroll, and there we go. That should be 30 pixels from the top of the viewport, at which point it becomes fixed. Position sticky. When I say becomes fixed, what I mean is that its behavior becomes like an element with position fixed. And here's a way that you can think about position sticky. You can think about it as being sort of a hybrid between position relative and position fixed. So the reason why we can think of it as a hybrid is that an element with position sticky at first stays in the normal document flow, but also allows us to have access to the top, right, bottom, and left properties. And then once it meets a particular threshold, changes its behavior to act like an element with position fixed. And an element with position fixed is an element that stays anchored to a particular place in the viewport, even when the document is being scrolled. So going back to the browser again, this navbar with position sticky basically goes through a state change, where its behavior begins as an element with position relative, and then at a certain threshold becomes an element with position fixed, and then if we go in the opposite direction, can go back to behaving like an element with position relative. We're going to look at another example now, which is going to show some important facets of position sticky. So in my code here, you can see in the HTML file, I now have five divs, each with a class of Spice Girl. And each of these divs is wrapping an image element, which is going to have an image of a different Spice Girl. You can see Ginger, Baby, Sporty, Scary, and Posh. And I'm grabbing those images from my image folder, which I have here in my directory. Now I've set my HTML up in this way because I want to talk about the idea of how position sticky elements relate to their containing element. So these divs here with the class Spice Girl are going to be the containing element and the image elements are going to be the elements that we're going to give position sticky to. So before we do any styling, let's just take a look at what we have so far. So here in the browser, we can see all of our five Spice Girls. All right, cool. Let's go back to our VS code now. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create a rule for my Spice Girl containing element. And I'm going to give each of those containing elements a height. I'm going to give them a height of 800 pixels. I'm also going to give each one of those a border. And I'm just going to do that so we can actually see the boundaries of the containing element. And then simply to move the images to the center of the page, I'm going to use text align and set that to a value of center. So let's go back to the browser now and see what we have. And here you can see each of the Spice Girl images residing in a containing element, which you can see here with this border. This is the div with the class Spice Girl. And each Spice Girl is contained in their containing element, as you can see. Spicy. The reason why I'm setting this up like this will become much clearer to you in a few minutes. So let's go back to VS Code now. And let's make a rule for our Spice Girl images. These are the ones that we're going to give position sticky to. And for now, once again, we'll set a top offset to zero, or zero pixels, we'll say explicitly. Now let's go back to the browser and let's see what result we get. So let's start scrolling. You can see Ginger up there, which is set with a position sticky, stuck to the top of the viewport at zero pixels. And now watch how the bottom of the containing element that she's in, as she meets the edge of that containing element, watch what happens. She no longer is fixed, but starts moving out of the viewport with that containing element. And now as Baby gets to the top of the viewport, she becomes fixed. And watch what happens to her as well when she meets the edge of her containing element. You see, she is no longer fixed anymore and she moves out of the viewport as well. And each one of these Spice Girls will exhibit the same behavior. So there are a few things to take away from this. The first is that the offset set by the top position of the sticky element is gonna be relative to its nearest scrolling ancestor. So in this case, it's the body element, which is the nearest scrolling ancestor. And so that top of zero pixels is relative to the body element. The other has to do with this container that we created around each of the images. As we saw, once the sticky element meets the opposite edge of its containing block, it no longer stays fixed, but starts scrolling along with its containing element. 
you can see one of the practical usages for this behavior that I just showed with position sticky here on the MDN website. Here we have these alphabetized headers. As you can see, we have A. And as we scroll, we get to the top of the viewport. All of the A selections scroll up underneath. And then as we get to the next section of elements that begin with the letter C, the header for C will stick to the top of the viewport and its elements will scroll up underneath it and so on and so forth for each letter. So thanks for checking out this video on position sticky in CSS. If you watched my previous video on positions relative, absolute, fixed, and static, now with position sticky, you've got all the positions covered in CSS. If you feel like you got some value out of this video, please give it a like, leave me a comment down below so I can know what other topics you might be interested in, and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you next time. Ooh, sticky.